Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, I am gonna be going over my five top essential Adobe Photoshop tools. So I use Photoshop on the daily when editing images, manipulating photos and distorting some sort of image. So hopefully in this video, you are gonna learn something new, something within Adobe Photoshop that you haven't used. So if you are ready, let's get into the first tool. So if you are new to this channel, then hey, my name is Abby. I am a brand designer from the UK with over five years of experience within this industry. I basically am just sharing my tips, my process and everything like that. And hopefully you can learn from these videos. So let's get straight into it with the first tool, which is the select and mask tool. So there are loads and loads, and I mean loads of ways to cut things out in Photoshop, but this is the one that I go to the most that seems to work and it seems to cut images out exactly how I want it without it being a long process. So if you don't know about select a mask tool, get to know it. So the select a mask tool is really good for cutting objects out from the background. If you wanna get rid of the background, then I would recommend using this. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is select your image in the layers panel that you want to select a mask. We're gonna go up to the top and click select and then select a mask. This will bring up a completely new panel um, so as you will see on the left hand side you will notice that you have a new toolbar and on the right hand side you have some other options so within this I am wanting to remove the background so to do this in here you need to go up to the top and press select subject so Photoshop will try and pick out the foreground of your image at the moment my transparency is down on the right hand side so if your image hasn't changed this will be why. So if you change the transparency, you will now notice that it has cut out the object that I wanted and removed the background for me. I noticed that there is a little bit here. I think this is the earring. So if you do get any bits that it hasn't cut out correctly, you can just remove them by going onto the brush, which is the quick selection tool, pressing the minus, and you can literally just hover over the bits that you don't want and it will try and do this for you. It has taken some of the face, so I'm just gonna go in with the plus, and hopefully this will now bring it back for me. You can have a little play around and see which tools work for you, get to know them a little more. I always find that trial and error works so well when you're just trying to learn stuff. Um, so get to know all of these tools on the right hand side, but if you're wanting to cut stuff out quickly, do this process and it should work for you. So on the right hand side, you do have some more options now you have a smooth tool and it just smooths out some of the lines for you if there is like a harsh line it will make this a lot smoother then you've got feather so if you do have really harsh lines on the outside you can put the feathering up um, just to make it seem a little softer and less harsh and there is a button as well which is decontaminate colors which say you've got some white on there from the background you can take this and it will refine the lines for you which i feel works really really well on this one but this is my go-to tool when I'm wanting to cut things out quickly to see how things look. And then if I know that this image is gonna be blown up big, I will go in with the pen tool and cut it out really, really well. But sometimes this works as you need it to. So then all I'm gonna do is press okay. And as you can see, it has created a layer mask and it has cut out the object exactly how I want it. So now I can go in and put a different background or anything that I need to. So next, I'm gonna move on to my next tool, which is the Content Aware Fill and Content Aware Scale. Now this has saved me many a times when I needed my picture to be a lot bigger, um, a lot wider. So before I used to just use the clone tool and it used to take so long, but finding the Content Aware Fill has just changed the game for me. So if you don't know about it, this is what it does. So we're gonna start off with the Content Aware Fill. So I've got my image. So what you can do is select the rectangle tool. I'm gonna to hover over some of the image and the extension of the artboard. Make sure that your image is selected and you can go to edit, content aware fill. Now this will now bring up a new panel and you will see on the right hand side, it has decided to pick out parts that it thinks it needs to fill. So if this doesn't look correct, I will make sure you guys can see. It's done a pretty good job, but we've got a few bits over here that just do not look right. 
So I'm going to get the brush tool and make sure mine is selected. I'm going to get rid of a few bits up here because I think it's picking up some weird stuff. And as you see, as I get rid of it to the right, my image will start to change. So I'm just going to continue doing this until I feel like the image looks a little bit better. So I think that has done a pretty good job. It has got the sky, it has got some of the reflection and it does what it needs to for the image that I need. So I'm gonna click OK and see what this looks like. Obviously you can go over, if you feel like it does look a little bit repetitive, you can just grab the clone tool and you can start going in and just adding in the bits that you need to. So what I would do is merge the layers now and then you can use your clone tool to just sort of go in, see the bits that are a little bit repetitive and just clone them out and do you know what? That is a pretty good job for taking me probably 10 seconds to do that. Now, as you can see, the image is more elongated. It has taken up a little bit more room if you ever need it to fit in that canvas and it didn't take that long. So I'm gonna just get rid of this again and I'm gonna show you the content aware scale, which this can be used as well as the previous one. So I've got my image now. I am gonna go to edit um content aware scale instead of content aware fill so now if i start moving this object to the right you will notice that it is picking up a load of different stuff and scaling it how it should be so now as you can see the image has been scaled and things have been kept in a good proportion. Although I do feel like this guy has been elongated a bit. And there is a way that you can do this if things do look a little misplaced and elongated. So I'm just gonna go back and you're gonna grab your lasso tool, select the object that you want to keep. And I'm gonna do a save selection. I'm just gonna name it as person, press okay. So then we're gonna just deselect what we have picked. So what we're gonna do now is go to edit, content aware scale, and you will notice at the top there is a protect. Now we have saved a selection, so we can click on person and it is gonna protect our person now. So I'm gonna do exactly the same as last time, scale this out and you will notice that the guy isn't being elongated anymore. He doesn't look big. He did look a bit stretched last time, but now he is the same proportion as last time and everything looks pretty amazing. Okay, so the next tool is the liquify tool. Now I mainly use this when dealing with portraits and if you're just wanting to manipulate and distort an image. So this is really good if you're dealing with someone's face, you can basically manipulate it to exactly how you want it. So for example, if an eye is bigger on one side, you can distort it to get bigger and look a lot more symmetrical because obviously a more symmetrical face looks more appealing to the eye. So if you've got your image in Photoshop, all you need to go to is filter and then liquefy. Now within this, this will bring up a whole panel and there are a lot of options to choose from. So if you have time, make sure you go and check it out and have a play around and see what you can come up with. My main thing that I use on this is the face tool. So if you click this little portrait button over here, it will bring up and Photoshop will select the areas of the face that you are trying to work with. So you can adjust this to exactly where you want it. As you can see, if I move this to the right and left, it is distorting the face, making it thinner, making it thicker. You can even adjust the forehead. Obviously this can be quite damaging because you are distorting someone's face. So I only like to make subtle tweaks. So to the left hand side, you have a load of different stuff. You've got the warp tool, you've got a reconstruct tool, a smooth tool, a bloat tool, which makes things bigger. You've got a freeze mask tool. Um, there are a lot of things in here and I don't know every single one of them. I mainly just use the face tool. Um, and once you've got the face tool selected, you have a panel to the right hand side as well, which you can go in if you look. If I move the eye size up, this is selecting the left one. It is increasing and decreasing the eye. So I'm just gonna have a play around now and just distort this slightly and see a before and after of these subtle tweaks.
Okay, so next I'm gonna go on to the clone tool, which I think is my most used tool within Adobe Photoshop. So this is used to pick up a certain object and basically replicate it in a certain area. So I'm gonna show you exactly how I use it and what the benefits are. So in my toolbar to the left-hand side, I have the clone stamp tool, I'm gonna to select that. Now say for example, instead of a piece of fruit on this one, I actually want some strawberries over here. The clone tool will be perfect to basically clone out um, these fruits. So I'm gonna clone the whole image and all I'm gonna do is press option and click on the bit that I wanna clone, move it to the center, and I'm just gonna brush on exactly where it is cloning from and it will remove the object behind and my new image is being cloned perfectly. Obviously you can go in and tweak this, but now we have the replicated clone of the object and I'm gonna do exactly the same to the Kiwi as well. Obviously if you, it does go wrong and you pick up something else, you can just go in and clone that back. But now, as you can see, I have pretty much replicated the left hand side to the right hand side and you probably wouldn't even know that I did that. So if you are wanting to swap anything out and replicate something on your image, use the clone tool. It doesn't take that long to use and it's pretty easy to use. So the last tool that I am gonna go on to, which has really helped me is arranging my workspace within Adobe Photoshop. So sometimes you might need to see two images and the way that I used to do it is basically bring out one of the panels and have it to the right hand side of my image. But I've actually found a way within Adobe Photoshop to arrange the artwork so you have two views of your image. So for example, if I wanted to see this image and this image because I wanna work on two things at once because I'm a maniac. So you can go to window arrange and then you will see some options here and you can pick exactly what you need if you need to see one image two images three images i'm going to go to two up vertical which is the one that i mainly use so if you click on that it will now bring up two of your images that you are working on you can move ones to the left and right and basically work on two images at the same time so if you are on a really tight deadline and you need to edit stuff really quickly you can switch between these two and still have them open you can also so if we go back you can go to window arrange and go to consolidate all which will take it back to the original but if you need to duplicate the image twice and work on two documents that are the same so for example if i'm really zoomed in on one image and you still want to see the other image you can go to window arrange and you can do a new window for this one, which I'm currently working on, and it will duplicate the window which it has over here. And now we can go to window arrange and we can go to up vertical. As you can see now we have two documents that we are currently working on, one that I can zoom in on and the other that will always be there. So I think this is a really great way if you wanna be more efficient when you're editing in Photoshop, and you can obviously change things if you wanna see three or four things you can go four up and it will bring up four different images for you which I think is insane and this is one that I only found recently and it has really helped with my efficiency within Adobe Photoshop. Let me know if you knew about this one because I feel like this one is a hidden gem. So those were my five top essential Adobe Photoshop tools that I use on the daily when editing photos. Let me know what your favorite tool is in Photoshop. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And let me know if you want me to do any more videos like this on my top tools within specific softwares. And make sure you subscribe to this channel if you wanna see some more design content just like this.